So then we'll be back here again in Dallas for a little unofficial visit, I guess, We're coming down for a couple of anointings and visitations. We're going to be back. And then this, uh, the two considerations, Feast of St. Anthony and Zachariah, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Ghost, Amen. The Gospel of the Mass today, I believe St. Anthony and Zachariah had a great love of little children. And so the Gospel of the Mass today is taken from that of St. Mark. And uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ was gathered around by little children, and he said, Unless you be as a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And while he was, and then he blessed the children and imposed hands upon them. And then the rich young man, the rich young man that has been uh, a consideration of many of the saints, came to our Lord. And he had a rich young man is like the majority of good men. Majority of good men. He came, but he, even though he's like the majority of good men, our Lord had a special love for him. And the rich young man came to our Lord and he said, Lord, what must I do to gain the kingdom of heaven? I feel as though there's something lacking in me. And he came and spoke to our Lord. And he asked him, he said, there's something lacking in me. And our Lord said to him, well, go, don't steal. Obey the commandments. Love God. And he said, I have done all these things since my youth. I've done all these things since my youth. And so we have a rich young man who said he did all these things since his youth. And it was just after our Lord was surrounded by the youth. And so though he's been good since all of his, since his childhood, he's been good since the very beginning. He's, he's been good since the very beginning. And that I've done all these things since my youth. And that uh, and our Lord therefore had a special love for him. And he poured out a special love for the rich young man. And he said, go, sell all that thou hast, give to the poor, and come follow me. And of course, he's being asked to be the 13th apostle. He's being asked to follow Christ. And he will go away exceeding sad. Gospel doesn't, uh, the gospel ends the day before that verse that the rich young man walked away exceeding sad. But he is a mysterious character because all oh, there are many, many people, many, many souls that God has poured his love upon. There are many, many souls that he's, he's said, I, I have a special love for you. Of course, God loves all his creatures. We know that God loves all his creatures. We know he loves all his creatures perfectly. But the saints tell us, though he loves all his creatures perfectly, he doesn't love them all with an equal love. In the way that St. Teresa of the child Jesus has described it, it says, imagine that you have six glasses, or two or three or four different glasses. And one is six ounces, another is eight ounces, another is 14 ounces. And that God loves them all completely, but he does not pour the same amount of water in each one. He doesn't have the same amount of love for each one. And the same we see of God's love of all creation. We know that he loves all creation perfectly, but he doesn't love the sun with the same love that he loves the farthest star. He doesn't love the moon with the same love that he loves the star. And one reason why God loves all things perfectly, but he loves them differently. He has a different love because his love is infinite. And one reason St. Thomas Aquinas describing this says, because our Lord Jesus, because God is infinite, he wanted to pour his infinite goodness into the world. He created the world, but the one thing he couldn't give to the world was infinitude. He made, of course, our souls to be created at a beginning, but then to live forever. He made the angels to be created to have a beginning, but to live forever. But there's nothing infinite in the world. So how could God put his infinitude into the world? And the way that he did it was make, by making an infinite number of things. And in this infinite number of things, he poured different aspects of his beauty, different aspects of his love, different aspects of his truth, different aspects of his goodness and his power, and all of his, all of his magnificence. And the same in the saints. God loves all the saints. He wants all the saints in heaven. He wants all the saints to see him face to face. He wants all the saints to have a great love of him, but he does not want the saints to all be identical one to another. He doesn't want every saint to be an apostle. He doesn't want every apostle to go to the same nation. He doesn't want every single uh, person to have the same exact way and the same exact manner and the same exact uh, mode of behavior. This is, the con this is the characteristic of sin. The one thing we notice about sin is that all sin is the same. All sin is identical. There's nothing special about impurity, nothing special about stealing, nothing special about lying, nothing special about any of the sins, her heresies, even the greatest sin to the weakest sin. There's nothing special about them. And each one is identical to the other and like walking down the railroad tracks. There's nothing, there's nothing special about them at all. And they take away our individuality and they take away our the goodness that God gave to us. They take away the magnificence God decided for us. And so the rich young man... He is going to give up. The great mystery of the rich young man is 
He's being asked to be the greatest of the apostles. It'll be St. Paul that takes his place. He's being asked to be the 13th and greatest of the apostles. And he's born out of due time. And St. Paul said, I was born out of due time. And our Lord gave that choice first to the rich young man. And he gave the rich young man when the rich young man was good and he came to him. But the rich young man rejected and therefore Christ would go to one who was not good, Saul of Tarsus. And he would take Saul of Tarsus, so even though he was wicked, Saul of Tarsus was wicked. Saul of Tarsus was trying to destroy the Catholic faith. Saul of Tarsus was trying to wipe out Christianity. But though he was wicked in doing that, at least he had the care in his heart. He had fire in his heart. He didn't just believe something without putting it into practice. He believed that the Christianity needed to be eliminated in its beginnings. He believed that Christ was not of God. He believed that this sect needed to be eliminated. Therefore, he would, got papers to go and arrest and eliminate the sect. He stood there at the death and martyrdom of St. Uh, Stephen. And so the, he, was, he was therefore uh, wanting to be, uh, he had fire in his belly. And the old rich young man must have also had this fire at some point. But what drove it out? And it says quite simply in the gospel, the saints tell us, it was one thing that drove it out, materialism, money, things. One reason why the devil has put so many things in our world today is because he's afraid of another Saul of Tarsus. He is afraid of that rich young man. The rich young man, had he accepted Christ, he would have been better than St. Peter, better than St. Matthew and St. Paul, or at least equal to St. Paul. But he was not. He rejected it. The fathers also tell us about this mysterious rejection, that when the rich young man said no to Christ, he did not commit a mortal sin. It wasn't a murder, it wasn't adultery, it wasn't a great, it was, he was, but it was a great offense, even though it wasn't a mortal sin, because God was calling him to receive the greatest of gifts. He was calling him to be his most intimate friend. He was calling him to receive the sacred priesthood and the episcopacy. He was calling him to receive the greatest of graces and to go out and become a fisher of men. And he decided no, because that would mean he would have to give up his few material things. And so his heart was divided. And this is the danger that's given to many good hearts in our times. The devil knows that this soul maybe is going to be called by God. And that soul is maybe going to be called by God. And this other soul is maybe going to be called by God. We don't know who they are, because we call all. But God knows. And the devil, though he doesn't know, he has a very good idea because he has 6,000 years of history of analyzing the saints. 6,000 years of analyzing how God has worked. And so he sees this soul is dangerous and that soul is dangerous and therefore he opens to them materialism. He opens to them the love of things. He opens to them money. He opens to them the, 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 the traps that he laid for the rich young man. He can't get everyone to go off and do drugs. He can get everyone to go off and become a murderer, everyone to go off and become a wicked criminal. But if he can at least get them tied down by things, tied down by the worry of money. And we see the flip side of what it says in the Mass of the Confessor. Who is this just man who is not ruled by money? Behold, look at him, for he hath done great things in his life. There's something about money. There's something about material things that is so dangerous for us human beings. Money is not bad. Money is not evil. We all need it to live. Priests need money. Monks need money to get food for their table and so on. All human beings have to touch money. But there's something about money that is so dangerous. Something about it that drags us down. And we have to be very careful about this, 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 this dragging down of money and have the great love of uh, uh, Christ to replace it. And why does it drag us down? Because somehow we take material things, somehow we take money, somehow we take security of this world and make it our most important thing, which means our God. And then one day they come to us and say, if you don't put the mark of the beast on your hand, if you don't put the mark of the beast on your forehead, then if you don't receive the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to buy a house. You're not going to be able to live in this world. And in order to make this mark of the beast, receive this mark of the beast, you're going to have to worship the beast. And the majority of souls throughout the entirety of the world, from Pope, Bishop, priests, all the way down to the lowest faithful, Catholics and pagans, all will build now kneel down in front of this beast. Why? Because of the love of things. And so we have to try to fight this during our lives, to fight the excessive love of things, the love of material things. And the way it's fought 
is, of course, by charity. Give to the poor, give to others. And when the money goes out, don't let it come back. We give, uh, give to the poor, give to others. And then also, of course, we've got to <coughs> replace the love of things with the love of God. Replace the love of things with the love of God. We have to speak to God. We have to have our daily speech with God. Of course, our normal prayers, the morning and night prayers and the rosary. But also, we must speak to God. We must talk to Him and ask Him to take away our weakness and sins and replace our, our foolish love of things with the love of Him. Because we all say we love Him. The rich young man was also not lying. If he was lying, the Lord would have said, You're a liar. You're like a Pharisee. He said, Lord, I have kept all these laws since, since my youth. And it was true. He was not lying. He did keep all those laws since his youth. And our Lord loved him. And he said, All right. I want you to go a step further. I want you to sell all you have and give to the poor. But he would walk away sad. He would walk away sad. And there's great sadness in the world today. One cause of sadness, of course, is sin. So St. Augustine says that's the greatest cause of sadness. But even those that are not immersed in sin, there's a lot of sadness. And the sadness is because we're too much attached to things. Too much attached to things. And we must try to remove this attachment the best that we can and turn to the love of God. And let those that God bless you all.